I, I guess I am obsessed with hats a little bit. For the first book, for I Want My Hat Back, I really wanted the cover that we have. I want my hat back with a character not wearing a hat. I thought that was a pretty funny cover. And then after that book got going, for a second or third book, I just liked the challenge of finding new stories with the same sort of device. Um, I also just like them. Um, they're easy to draw. They're easy to put on top of characters. They're a nice visual ending for a book. I think that these books, picture books generally for kids, it's nice that if the ending is visual as well as in the story. And so at the end of a book about not having your hat, if that character is wearing his hat, that's a good visual ending. And so it's very, uh, it's just a clear way of ending your book. Um, I also just think they're fun because they don't, they're not needed. Hats aren't necessary objects, at least the ones that we're drawing aren't. And so if it was food or money or something, you could sort of justify characters stealing them. But if it's just a hat, that just means they just like their hat. And then it turns into a bit of a love story. And so it's, it's just more emotional than it is uh, necessary, I guess, which makes for a more heartfelt thing for me to draw and write. Um, for the Hat series of books, for the first one, it was sort of a challenge for me to write anything. Um, I'd only been an illustrator until then, and so uh, doing the books all in dialogue the way these three books are, solving that problem over and over again was mainly the challenge for it. Um, for the first book, as soon as I figured out that I wanted to do it all in dialogue, I didn't even have a story yet, um, but as soon as they just started talking, when it's just dialogue and pictures, that to me suggested lying right away. and so because the narrative doesn't say they're lying, only the words and the pictures together show you that they're lying. That trick, um, and finding new ways to use that trick of just using dialogue to tell a story that might not even be in either one of the sides necessarily, um, has been really enjoyable. And so that's kind of the inspiration for the hat books. It doesn't have much to do with hats, but it's definitely been sort of a self-education in picture book writing. I don't think that it's necessary for them to do it. I, I've never been, strangely, I've never been one to do it on purpose. It's just that um, I think partially my memories of picture books when I was a kid, I liked darker ones. I didn't like scary movies or scary television, and I still really don't. I don't seek it out, and I get easily scared and traumatized by that stuff. But I remember when I was a kid finding picture books that were intentionally scary, or edgy at least, being very interesting to me because I could control it. If you're, in a, if you're watching a film or you're watching television and it's scary, you're being dragged through it. You're being dragged through time and there's no way to control your experience. You have to watch it as it's moving along. But with a scary book, you can always close it or you can turn the page as slowly as you want to. And I always felt safe with scary books and it was a nice way to be scared. Um, not that I don't think these books are, I don't think these books are scary. It's just that they, they're a little bit edgy and the endings are sort of unfortunate. They're not nice and tidy. Um, but I don't think it's necessary. And I'm hoping that actually this third book proves the point a little bit. It, it doesn't have as dark an ending as the other ones. I tried to go the other way a little bit and see if I could pull it off, because it's the harder thing to do. I think, in retrospect, killing off your main characters is a pretty simple way to end a book. But um, having them actually come to some sort of a, a conclusion where that doesn't happen turned out to be much trickier. But I'm prouder of this book for that. I think I pull influences from all sorts of places. I try not to look at too many picture books because it's, it's too close to the form I'm trying to make. And so if you look at picture books too often, I think you end up copying it because you're looking at shortcuts or solutions to problems that you might not have. Every picture book and every, every I think every designer and every artist generally is solving problems that are local to that project. And if you end up aping something in another picture book um, too closely, you're, you're faking it and it comes off as fake and kids can smell that and I can smell it. I don't want to do that. And so I end up looking at documentaries and, and novels and photography a lot. I really like Errol Morris. He's my favorite documentary filmmaker. And I like my favorite novelist is probably Cormac McCarthy. And his way of writing dialogue is a big part of why these books don't have quotation marks or why they're very straightforward in their dialogue. They don't have a lot of descriptors, at least in the words that people say. Um, and just the tone of it. I think I read once Cormac McCarthy saying that um, Stories not, that aren't about life and death don't really interest him, and I can, I can relate to that. I don't think I, I have a hard time coming up with stories that don't at least imply that someone might die. <laughs> um, I, I like books about um, books where the, the actors or the characters themselves are propelling the, the story, that it's not necessarily um, about a plot, it's about decisions that characters are making. Um, it's, it's a challenge for me to try and get into stories like that because I'm, I'm still learning how to write, I feel like. 
But reading those kinds of books, and also reading documentary um, books, nonfiction ones, show you how to make even very dry material or very sort of nonfiction material entertaining, an arc a story with any kind of material you're given. Um, so those would be my influences, that kind of thing. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think I've ever heard that before. It's, that's an interesting thing that happens. Um, I'll try and write a book called "Will You Date Me," I guess, to sort of help that out. But <laughs> I, I don't think I write for anybody in mind, really. I think that the language that we use is meant for children to get it. In that the words are simple and the phrasing is simple and kind of chopped up the way that these books are meant to be. But I don't know if if I can have a, a certain age group in mind. I think if it makes me laugh and I, I kind of smile while I, while I write it, that's about as good as you can get as far as how to judge who it's going to appeal to. Um, I think uh, <laughs> thinking about the hipster markets may be the worst thing you can do for picture books. I, I wouldn't like books that are aimed at 20-somethings as sort of a sarcastic um, bent. I think that the, the first book, I Want My Hat Back, has a little bit of that, and I tried to run the other way as quickly as I could just because I didn't want to make books just for adults. You want to make books for kids, that's who it's for. If it appeals to adults because it appeals to me, that's that's... Uh, that's just great, but the kids are the hardest audience, and if you can get them, you've really won, I think. I don't know if it's as important for the adult to enjoy. I think that kids have different ways of experiencing picture books, because sometimes they're being read too, and sometimes they're reading them themselves, and those two experiences are very different, and so that's why I like putting information in the pictures that aren't necessarily uh, in the text. Uh, but I don't think that I'm thinking of adults being entertained while I'm doing it. I think the best favor you can do for adults who are reading the books to kids is making them short. Um, but also, the length of text on a page is really important. If, if, you, if a kid is being read a book and they turn the page and there's a giant block of text next to a picture, the kid knows they're in for five minutes of sitting there looking at the same picture. And you have to sort of guard against that, I think. Just the book being accessible at every page turn and being inviting that way, where you know you can only ha you only have to read like one sentence or two sentences on the page, is something I'm really conscious of. And so I think hopefully adults who are reading these books to kids um, pick up on that. But also kids aren't scared off by that either. That's that's really on purpose. No, no, there is not any circumstances. That's what these books are about. If there's anything, <laughs> we're not talking about abstractions here. This is it's wrong to steal a hat. I think that stealing a hat is also really demeaning because it means that someone physically got on top of you. You wear a hat on your head and so if someone managed to get the hat off of your head that usually means they were either taller than you or they managed to get over you somehow. It's a really embarrassing thing to happen when someone steals your hat. So I can't think of any circumstance where it's acceptable. Um, and I think I've shown that three books now. 